Cute, that's great. Well, <clears throat> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Good to be with you. It's hard to imagine. It's this week, right? Just a few days away. We're going to be there. And again, I was telling the first service folk that, I mean, I, personally, I'm one of those ones that I'm a fan. Uh, I'm, I, whatever you can do, Christmas, a couple times a year would be good with me. But then again, when it comes to food, once a week would be better for me. I just I love it. But all the decorations, again, thanks to Todd and Kat and Cherie and so many others. I think Brent got involved and others putting this stuff up which is so creative, so thank you for, for making that happen. That's beautiful. And um, it's just a, it's, it's a great time. But I know, and you know too, that even though that's, it's true, it is Merry Christmas, right? Well, there's still life out there. And stuff comes at us sideways and all sorts of ways. And, and I especially got a dose of that uh, this past week when I was shopping and I was at Best Buy standing in line and uh, you can imagine, well maybe you can't, It was because it, it, it was strange to me. There was an older gentleman and I came up behind him with my stuff once I found out which line to really get in because it's at Best Buy it seems like it's always moving. Like where, which line do you get in? And I got in line, there's an older gentleman there and he, all of a sudden he turns to me unsolicited. I did not engage him, I did not talk to him. He just turned, because I'm looking at his back, he just turns and goes, I'm shafted this Christmas. Like, wow, really? He goes, yeah. I, and then he just went on. He goes, I bought my wife a diamond ring, and I found out all she wants is a drone. <laughs> That's what he said. I bought her a diamond ring, and all she wanted was a drone. You know? So much for all those commercials on TV all the time, right? But the girl's like, you know, on and on and like that. that. That's what he said. And I'm like, Wow. I, trying to figure it out, like it just seems like that's wrong, you know. But then he showed me he had a box with a little drone with a propeller thing on it, and he goes, "I hey, see, I got this thing." He goes, "What happened?" And again, he just unsolicited, he just he kept going. I mean, obviously he was he was upset. In his words, literally, I'm shafted. He goes, "I went online and did some initial research for a ring, and I was on the computer." Days later, much later, and with my wife, and all of a sudden an ad popped up for rings. And she made a comment like, oh, that's, that's so stupid and exorbitant and all this and that. And, and I'm thinking, okay, I just went. I had a custom ring made for almost $3,000. And, and, and she says, I want a drone. She goes, I could have bought a fleet of drones <laughs> for her instead. So I'm giving her this drone, and I'm, I know she really like it, and I'm not sure about the ring, but... That's the way it is. I'm shafted. I'm going, wow. <laughs> That's amazing, right? Like that. But I know, I mean, now it's like over the top, right? I, in the moment, I wasn't really feeling that way, like with him. I was trying to like, wow, that's rough. That's about all I could say. I didn't get any further into it with him. But, you know, as, as, as the day goes by and as the, the days go by, I mean, yeah, there's moments. There, there is for me, at least. There's moments and that come up where I feel like, ah, there's really kind of just a sadness at times and this conflicted thing where I'm saying these words and hearing these songs, but really, I'm really someplace else inside. And for example, I notice it when I read the newspaper, listen to the news, and even locally, this, this, this past bit of time, you know, Ring of Twelve get indicted for heroin, right? Do you guys see that in the newspaper like that? Or that, right, and then right next to it, as if that wasn't bad enough, right next to it, STDs on the increase in Sonoma County. I'm like, oh yeah, awesome, right? <laughs> or then the next, the next little bit, it says, um, the, the headline was, um, the LA schools shut down because of a terrorist threat. Over 650,000 kids don't go to school. And listening to the news like that, did you hear some of the comments about that were, People were saying, like, of course, we're not going to be deterred. We're going to live our lives. We're going to live in freedom. But we just need to accept that this is now the new normal. Like, I don't want to accept that this is the new normal. You know, it's like bomb threats, terrorist threats against our kids in school. Sadness, kind of this conflicted thing that goes off and on and on and on when you read the paper or just experience life. It can come in all sorts of ways. And knowing that this morning, we were going to go into Luke chapter 2, and again, I'll have the, some of the words back again up there. If you want to open up your Bibles, you may. Thinking about the shepherds, thinking about these guys that were living their life, 
thinking that they likewise, probably in a very real way, in a very, very, I want to say tangible way, inside their hearts, felt similar to the guy in line at Best Buy, like, really? I'm shafted. I'm a shepherd. I'm a shepherd here outside of Bethlehem. And I live on the fringe of society. I can't even go to church. They're, they couldn't, they weren't allowed to enter into temple worship, right? So I'm, I think about the priest. I'm thinking if I was one of those guys, the pastor back then, I get to stand at the front door and check IDs. Oh, you're a shepherd. You can't come in. That'd be pretty awful. But that's what they had to live with. They knew not to even really enter in because they couldn't. They're unclean. They're living their lives. They're out on the edge of society. And it's in the cold of night, in the darkness. There they are, right? That was their life. That was their existence. That they're feeling like, really, this is my life. This is how I get to live day in and day out. And it's a struggle. I thought about the words that um, Philip Keller wrote a book called Rabboni. And in there, he, he tries to articulate what they might have been feeling that first, the shepherds, that first Christmas night as they stood outside in the hills of Bethlehem. And he writes these words, Outside the stable that night, all had been still, except perhaps for the distant call of the scavenging jackal. The stars, bright, intense, pulsating desert stars, cast a pale glow across the countryside. And in the faint starlit little clusters of sheep, accompanied by their watchful owners, moved across the barren landscape in search of grass to graze or brush to browse. It, wasn't, it was always preferable to pasture the feeble flock at night when dreadful drought ravaged the countryside. At least, they didn't have to contend with the desperate heat and the thirst of the midday sun. Nor were they troubled by the flies of the air, the other parasites that seemed to torment the sheep day and night, but especially in the daytime heat. But the shepherds, they were troubled men for day after day after day and week after week. They watched their pasture land and their sheep struggle to survive. Their sheep often wasted away. The older ewes, with their teeth worn out, could not survive on the hard herbage. And finally, they would collapse in utter weakness. Starved and sickly, their carcasses littered the landscape. Vultures, crows, ravens fed upon their corpses during the day. And by night, the jackals fought over them. The shepherds turned their troubled eyes to search the skies for clouds. Even a hint of rain, but there was none. Only drought. But even that was not enough, for each man wrestled with his own heart, struggling, wondering if he could survive. And had the Lord God, Jehovah of Israel, forgotten his people? Were the heavens shut up against his people that there was neither rain to refresh the land nor dew to refresh, refresh the flocks? And then suddenly, in that context, in a life like that, in a situation, in circumstances where that's where I live. This is my day in, day out experience. And here I am again, a shepherd in the dark, at night, out in the cold. But then suddenly, the scripture says in, in um, verse uh, 9, if I can get to that. Wes? There it is. Then suddenly, out of the darkness, it says, an angel stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Suddenly, God shows up. Suddenly, a light comes forth. Suddenly, whatever was routine, whatever was typical, whatever was the norm for them, was completely, utterly interrupted. Now, I like the Bible, obviously. I trust you do too. But I want to say, and I think Glenn was inferring it when he was reading it over, that we get so familiar with the text that we just kind of like a skipping rock over it and don't really read and see what it says. And I have proof that that's so. Okay? Because when we read these words of the Lord suddenly appearing with his angel or with the angel and what happened around him, we look at that in a little different way. And... Um, Wes, I can't, it's not moving. This is how we see it. What does this say? Was the angel standing before him? No. The angel's in the sky. And who's really lit up? The angel's lit up. What did the verse say again? 
It said the angel of the Lord stood before them. It said that the glory of the Lord did what? It shone around them. That's the shepherds. And yet, when you look at most of the pictures, I just found it interesting that, uh, that most of the pictures that we get look like this. The angel's up in the sky, and he's not standing among them. It's a little thing, is it? But to me, this is an indicator of how, okay, forget the painters. Forget one of these are Rembrandt. Forget Rembrandt. Let's talk about you and me. Is this how we read the scriptures? Where we just kind of bounce over and go, this is it. And we get whatever picture that we want to make up in our mind about what took place. Because what this says here is that the angel of the Lord suddenly stood right before the shepherds and was there. And the glory of the Lord was on those, those common men. The only thing that, that the shepherds really have around them usually are sheep, right? And the only thing perhaps that's kind of like glowing off of them is the stink of their own sweat, right? Not, not, not the glory of the Lord. I mean, and especially not shepherds. But according to this, it was. And then it says that at that moment, they were terribly blessed. No, no they reacted like you and me. Right? They said they were absolutely, utterly, terribly frightened out of their minds. I'm imagining too, just seeing, what does that mean? They probably hit the deck on their knees or maybe on their face thinking, I'd be dead. This is it. It's over. I'm about to die. God, I knew I was a bad guy. I knew I wasn't high in society. I knew that, that well, just the way I'm positioned in life. I'm on the fringe, and now God's taken me out first, right? Why didn't he land in the middle of Bethlehem? I'd like to see a little glow there. But no, on the outskirts, he lands on me. And they were utterly, terribly frightened. But that's who we are. I want to say whenever God comes in and actually shows up, like, well, like, like God does show up, our normal reaction is like, is not just shock and surprise, but it's often fear. It was true for Zechariah. Right? When he happened in, in um, chapter 1, when he came, the angel of the Lord, the same angel probably, Gabriel came and said, hey, this is what's going to happen. He didn't believe him. And it says he was afraid. And he said, don't be afraid. When he came to Mary, what did the angel say? Don't be afraid. When the angel came to Joseph, what did he say? Don't be afraid. When the presence of God, listen to what I'm saying here. It's like, because I believe it's true for me and us. The way we live our lives, we're so earthbound we're so worldly, we're so in our stuff, even though we confess that God is truly God and that, of course, he interacts with us in our lives, that when he shows up, that often we're not, we're dumbfounded, we're confused, we're shocked, dismayed, and I won't even say like them, we're like fearful, like, uh oh, if God's really speaking, is he mad at me? Am I in trouble? What's going wrong? That's, our, that's what we see in this verse and in Scripture. And again, I think at times we see that within ourselves, that it comes up that way. But that's not, that's not what um, the angel said. The angel instead said, whoa, <laughs> don't be afraid. Instead, I've got good news. I'm not here to kill you. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to point out every little sin in your life and show you that all the bad stuff you were thinking, dude, there's so much more than that. Is, that's where our mind goes. Instead, I've got good news of great joy, right? That shall be for all the people. I want to give it to you. And then because I think they were so afraid, rather than mince any words and trying to get kind of verbose on, eloquently explaining all this stuff, he cuts right to the chase and just says, here's the details. For today in the city of David... There's been born for you a Savior, Christ the Lord. Just boom, there it is. Just the facts. It's the way I see it, just straight away. In fact, if you really look at it, it lays out like this. The when today. Where in the city of David? What? Born for you a Savior. Who's that? He's Christ, Messiah, the Lord. When the Lord wants to speak to you, and when God shows up, most of the time in all of our lives, whether it be 
in the context of our daily living or even the context of church while you're worshiping. Honestly, think about it. He usually makes it very simple and very straightforward. It's not complicated. Hey, I love you, or it might say stop, or go here, and yet we just start spinning and making all this stuff about it. And God just very direct. He was back then with the shepherds. I think they needed it. I know that I need it that way. Think about when God's spoken to you. Hasn't it been clear? Hasn't it been direct? Suddenly, there's some sort of sense in your consciousness and in your heart, or through the Word of God, you get this message, and it's simple and profound. But for the shepherds, for them, there had to be more. And there was. So he goes, okay, just so you can understand, I'm going to give you a sign. I'm going to give you something tangible to prove what I'm talking about is true. I'm going to give you some sort of manifestation that you can look with your eyes and say, wow, it's not just a bunch of heavenly, godly verbiage, but it actually is real. Again, I want to say God does that for us. God, God gives us signs. He gives us things that tangibly, should we choose to see them, are right there that prove that the heavenly, godly message that's given, you know what? They're not just words. They're not just some, some preacher speaking a word, some pastor laying out a teaching, some sort of scripture written in a, a nice little book, but it's truth. Do you see it? Here is the sign that I have for you. You'll see a baby lying in a manger, right? It's going to be wrapped in cloth. And then my, my, my picture of that is because that word was so profound, that truth was so huge, the angels were waiting so long to finally say, it happened that it just had, the heavens had to break forth. And they did. All of a sudden it says, suddenly, again, not one, but it says, a multitude of angels appear with the one, and they start declaring praise unto God. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, what about earth? Peace among men with whom he is pleased. Glory to God in the highest. The, the heavens vibrated with the declaration of this angelic host and the shepherds are there. Just what are they? What is going on? Still shocked. Probably no longer necessarily terrified, but just overwhelmed with this angelic message that's being spoken unto them, and it lands on them. Out of the darkness, suddenly an angel. And in the midst of one angel and the glory of the Lord shining on them, suddenly a great host of angels singing forth, speaking forth, declaring forth praises to God. God, you are glorious and you are great. And then notice the details again. I think, again, we make up a different story about this, that the angels just, just like they came, they disappeared. No, that's not what it says. What does it say? It says here, and it came about that when the angels had gone away from them into heaven. That phrase there is actually kind of like the same phrase that's in Acts chapter 1 with Jesus ascending into heaven. It doesn't say in Acts chapter 1, it doesn't say here, suddenly they sprouted wings or they spread their wings like we know angels all have, right? And just caught an updraft and off they went, right? Doesn't say that. It doesn't say like a tractor beam from heaven came down and sucked them up in a vortex. Like something, you know, like that. It doesn't say that. It says that, that they just ascended, it says they went into heaven. And there's not a lot of talk with the shepherds. They're just, again, I'm thinking, they're just, wow. And the only thing they get out is like, yeah, let's go see. Let's go right now, straight away to Bethlehem. And that's their response. What are you, what are you gonna say? How can you debate it? What's, what are their sort of commentary? I, I don't even know how to describe what went on in that moment. They just, we've got to do this. We've got to go. And they did. It says, in that moment, let us go straight away and find out this thing that the Lord has made known to us. And they went. And when they got there, it said they made haste, which means they didn't stop along the way. They didn't stop and tell the wife, honey, I'm leaving the sheep for a while. Send somebody else up there. Tell my son to go. And we're on our way. They just split and got there. And then they find Mary and Joseph 
and the baby just as they were, for, they were told. And when they had saw this, they made the statement known to them about the child. It's been noted by many commentators, and maybe you've heard that, that the very first evangelists in the New Testament were the most unlikely characters, and they're called shepherds. In the, in the wisdom of God, he didn't make it some great teacher, some great rabbi, some great priest, but instead he took guys that can't even come to church <laughs> and gave them the message of Christ the Savior. Isn't that what he does? Isn't that what he does? Hey, we're in this room. Those of us in this room. He takes the most unlikely characters. I know I qualify. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. And says... You do it. You, I'm telling you, here's the information. Now, guess what? Go, and when you go, you can, you, you got to tell them. Uh, let me tell you what I heard. Here's the reality of, of the heavenly message regarding Christ. And he spoke it forth. They, they, they put it out. And then, well, how did they respond? We read it earlier. Well, they all, it says, wondered. That means that they were astonished, and they were kind of spinning it with doubt. Like, really? Because what I see is I see a stable or a cave and a manger or a trough and a baby in the weirdest circumstance. This is weird. Shouldn't happen. Even in Bethlehem, this is, but I'm glad, is everybody okay? I'm glad the baby's all right. Mom's doing fine. Here we really are. Uh, Christ the Lord? Uh-huh. Sure. Right? They all wondered, like, what in the world are they talking about? What are they talking about? So that was going on. And then, but what about Mary? We read about Mary. And Mary, it says that she treasured them up and she pondered them, right, in her heart. That sense of, like, Mary grabbed them and then kind of didn't say, amen, I knew it. Told you, Joseph. You know, all that you were worried about, God's got it covered. You know? No. Nah. She took them and she put them inside and, and held on to them and, and began to try to put the puzzle together for herself in her own wonderment about what was really going on. I mean, no. We read about Mary all the way through. She was trying to figure it out with the time when Jesus was teaching later on in life. She tried to call him back like, what are you doing, son? Come on home. And Jesus said, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? But she took it in this moment, the words that were given, and let it kind of land on her and spin around on her. And then <laughs> there was something different. This is the one, right? And the shepherds, they went back glorifying and praising God, right? For all that they were told them. They reacted way differently. Why? Why? Why would the shepherds respond that way unlike the other ones? Well, they'd seen the angels. Was that it? They had an encounter, so that's why. Was it because the sign proved to be true that there was a baby actually there and they found it lying in a manger? Was that it? I don't think it was. I think it was so much more. I think that in the midst of their lives, as they were again dealing with the struggles of their existence, the calling, my job, how I live, the sheep I have to take care of, God showed up. God showed up. The glory of God made manifest. All of a sudden, I can see that I know that I know that God is alive and he cares. He knows me. He, I'm, I'm having an interaction from a messenger of God to me and I, I am struck with the power and the presence and the message of God in my life. And they went back, it says, praising God, speaking glory to his name. And they were changed. And the point being, in this context, is that my testimony is, I'm not the same. I cannot not sing the songs of Christmas and not rejoice because I have encountered the Christ. And you can't be here this morning and sing the familiar traditional carols, as different as they are compared to our typical praise music, or even our praise songs, and not find yourself with the Spirit of God rising up in you, wanting to actually say, Amen, it's so. 
Because I have met and seen that the word of God is made real in the person of Christ and I've been impacted that way. Or at least I trust that's been so. I trust that you, like those early shepherds, when you got whatever it is you were given, by the goodness of God, regarding the person of God, you took your journey. And you went and found out on your own. Is it true? And that as you did, simple and straightforward, that you saw that they weren't words. They weren't some tradition. This isn't some sort of mythological book. But in fact, God's written revelation of who he is, made alive now by the presence of Christ, still here today, this Christmas time, by his presence and spirit within us. If, if, again, like the shepherds, you had the faith to go and see and find out. If not, then they're just words. They're just songs. It's just another season, and maybe kind of a big season, to have parties and get through and to move on because a new year's coming. Or maybe it's about the bowl games. I don't know. Or your fantasy team. I don't know. Right? But back then, on that particular Christmas morning, when they encountered the person of God in Christ, these shepherds could not not praise him and speak forth about his glory and his goodness. It just welled up inside and changed them. I was in another line years ago, not far from Best Buy, and um, down, just a few rows down at Target. And some of you years ago heard me share, this was in 2005. I was in line with Teddy, who was 11 then, and Alan, who was 13. And, um, and at that time, honestly, I was the one probably turning to people saying, I'm shafted at that. Because uh, uh, was, there was a worldwide event going on in that moment. And what it was, it wasn't Star Wars or Harry Potter or any movie. No, it was the release, the very first release ever of Xbox. And they had to have one. You know, that was it. It was, it was about. And so Best Buy had a line from the very, we checked Best Buy, right? We're there. Best Buy from the front of the store, they started lining up three days before all the way around to the back. The guy in the front of the line was from Brazil. He flew in from Brazil to get his Xbox, you know? And they went all, it went all and they were going to have a midnight showing, right? At midnight, they were going to open. And um, they had Xboxes. That was great. The bad part, they only had 163. I remember. I asked them. And, and so they gave bracelets. Later on, and unfortunately, it was kind of late in the evening, so those that didn't get a bracelet were a little upset. Uh, 163, he told the rest, you can all go home. Well, we had already checked, and so instead, we went down a few stores and asked them at Target, are you guys selling Xbox? Oh, yeah, we'll be selling them. We open at 8. Awesome. Um, hello, Maggie. I'm on my cell phone. I'm with the boys, and we're spending the night here out in front of Target to make sure we're first in line. <laughs> Seriously. And so she brought us a camp chair, sleeping bag, so we could kind of sit there like this, all night long, and the cold, it was freezing. Oh my gosh, it was absolutely freezing. And, and the thing that I never thought about, and, and I can tell you and forewarn you, that when you do this, you need to bring earplugs. Because there is this devious, demented dude who drives this little screeching, scraping street cleaner and cleans the, uh, the parking lot all night. And he's like, I'm like, going, oh my gosh. It was bad enough to be cold and be out in the dark all night long and know, man, can't they open at 6, 8 o'clock, seriously, like that. No. That's going on. I finally fell asleep, and I'm sleeping next to the trash can. When you walk into Target, it's that doorway on the left. There's a little bench there, and there's a trash can. That's where I was all night. I mean, I, um, Target's never the same for me. Right there, and the lid flies open. The guy's digging for bottles in the middle of the night. I'm saying, seriously? Right at my head? It was for real. Like that, I was like that. You know, and the boys, well, talk about them. Eventually, let's go there. The doors opened. They came out and said, hey, okay, we're going to open the door soon. Okay, let's go. 
Ah, we'd finished the hot chocolate and all the food that Maggie brought me. She's saying, I'm not spending the night. I totally get it. So we go in, and I'm, of course, I'm smart enough to go, like, if I'm going to wait in line, then, and there's three of us, I'm buying three of them. Oh, we're each going to get one. There's no doubt about it. And I'm going to sell the other two on eBay and make some money. <laughs> like that. I, like, I am not going to sit in line and not, and not make some money. For, I'm, something's going to happen here, right? Like this. So we did, and, and it worked, and it was awesome. No, that was it. But, but we're, we hop. I'm finally, when it gets all done, we're in the car. I'm thinking, okay, what's my day going to be like? Oh, I'm exhausted. Thinking, yes, I'm thinking, I'm shafted. I am just exhausted. And then finally, the voices behind me in the next seat, and my kids say, Dad, that was the greatest night of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly, honestly, um, I get changed. I'm still cold and I'm still exhausted. Um, I'm still out a ton of money at that point. Um, but, but God's speaking to me. It's like, you know what? You, you loved your kids well that night. Um, that was a good thing. That was really a special thing. We were joking about it recently. That I mean, they still remember it. And they said, Dad, that was one of the craziest things you ever did. Like that. Um, and it was. But how cool that in the middle of some crazy thing that we went on, that God would show up and speak to me and say like, dude, this was actually really a holy moment and a really special time. And God, that's how you show up. I can't run to Bethlehem, and neither can you, and look and see the baby Jesus laying in a manger. He came. It happened. It's history, and it's also theology. It's the truth of God. But I can, if I choose to see and hear correctly, find him in the strangest ways, at times God showing up, even in a night that's cold and dark through the night, an experience in front of Target with my kids, I'm here, and I'm showing up in your lives. And I found myself strangely kind of lighter then and, and just grateful to God. Do you hear what I'm saying? I mean, is it possible to worship the Lord after spending all night at Target? I'm telling you, it was. Like, I'm grateful, Lord, for the gift of this moment. I'm grateful that you could show up like this and be made real in my life and with my sons. I'm so thankful and I don't know your story. I don't know um, how he's come to you, but I know that he has. And I know if you can say inside, I, he hasn't come to me. That I know that if you look this Christmas, if you pray in this day and say, Jesus, show me yourself. Let me go there and behold the Christ. The sign that is supposed to prove that the message from the angels, it is true. He will take you there. You will see it for what is to be seen. And you will be different. And however shafted <laughs> you might feel or confused or befuddled this Christmas, it will be different. And you can, I, I know that I know, it can be different. And you can walk away like the shepherds and find yourself just grateful. God, thank you. Praise be to your name. Glory to the Father for the gift of your Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord, a Savior for the world, my Redeemer. Your words will change and your attitude will morph because of the gift of Christmas and the revelation of the gift of Christ in your life. That's my prayer for you. Can we bow together? I'm going to ask now... Yeah, just in this moment, during this Christmas season, will you pray that prayer? Christ, take me to you this season. Allow me to see you and encounter you and know you in some fresh way. I want to know you. I want to experience you. I want to see you. That my mouth and my heart and my very being would resound with the praise and the glory of God unto you. Pray that prayer. Because I believe that if you do, that God will answer that. Just look for it. 
see it and watch how the tone of your voice and the, the measure of your heart, it will radically change. You won't be the same. There'll be a different song. Think about that as Eden sings this song.